Welcome back to At Home Crypto. Today we have a special guest, Nate Porter. He is also uh, a crypto miner, cryptocurrency miner, and he's working on a system now that I really am impressed by. This is something I did not do, but will absolutely build one now after seeing this and using mine. But what he has built is a nice rig case for his. There. And if you see mine, I have mine more on a shelf, but now after working with it, I know this is the right way to go. So let me introduce y'all to Nate. Nate, what is this for and why did you build this rig case? So uh, the case is obviously to be able to store up to six GPU miners um, and then you know the rest of the equipment. Uh, I wanted to make sure that it was something that could be secure because um, ideally I'd like to be able to build a couple of these and have them kind of sitting in a room and you know I don't want somebody to bump a shelf and have stuff fall over or anything like that. So I um, you know I watched a you know a few YouTube videos, obviously your channel, um, and I, I found just kind of some real simple plans to build a real simple basic frame. Um, I've seen a lot of these on sale for you know 150, 200 bucks, and um, I think altogether it was maybe 40 bucks worth of supplies, uh, maybe even less than that um, to be able to go ahead and do this. Um, it was really easy to find. I just went to uh, Home Depot. I'm sure you could go to Lowe's or any uh, you know store of that nature. I know you said that uh, Ace Hardware didn't have the uh, L-shaped metal brackets or metal metal pieces, um, but basically these come in. Uh, I think they're six feet. And um, I used a hacksaw with uh, 32 teeth per inch uh, to go ahead and cut this. Um, it, was, it was really simple. At first I was working on uh, 18 teeth per inch and it was actually really difficult to cut through. And the higher I went up in teeth per inch, the uh, easier it actually became. Um, That's great information. Okay, so did, that was 32? 32 teeth per inch in the hacksaw oh. blade. Um, it, it really, I mean, it still takes a minute to cut through, but I mean, each piece uh, cuts in about 30 seconds, I would say, and, and you can see how how well it, it keeps the straight line. Yeah, I wanted everybody to see, it's very flat. Yeah, it's this is good information. I thought it would be coming out, but no, it's very and, flat. And with that, um, you know, there's a, I can't remember what the boxes are called, but they're basically, they make sure that your blade stays in a straight line as you're cutting. Mm -hmm. uh, I used one of those, I, I placed it in there and used my hand to keep it steady and then just saw it right through. It was really simple. Um, the hacksaw was also good with some of the precision that needed to be done. Um, so this piece right here coming across uh, didn't fit originally. And uh, I was able to go ahead and just you know saw off a, a little bit of it, not having to take a big chunk. So um, I was actually pretty surprised by how easy it was to cut the metal here. pieces. Show them how good it looks inside too. Look at that. And then the, the screws, um, those are self-driving screws. So I didn't pre-drill any holes or anything of that nature. Um, I did find that it was a lot easier to do, uh, you know, screw through one piece at a time, not necessarily try to screw through the entire thing. Um, so you're saying screw through this top piece and not both at the same time. Exactly, and to, to do that, um, you know, you kind of want to use some of your pieces to, because obviously there's, you know, if you look, it's kind of L-shaped. Yep. So, you know, it's not the easiest to be able to just screw straight down because that kind of wants to topple over. Mm -hmm. So you kind of need to have something to support this up, but then you just come right through, you drill through the first hole, then you place this on top of it, so you're lined up, and you drill through the second hole. The other thing you want to keep in mind is you want to make sure that these are a little off uh, uh, center of each other, that way the two screws, when they both go in, they don't actually hit each other, in which case you'd have them bulging out, so you got to kind of pay a little bit of attention there. Okay, that's really good. So y'all caught that? Keep this a little bit over and this so that they don't, the ends of the screws don't hit each other. That's really good advice. Um, what was the dimensions that you got? The dimensions, um, again, I just kind of went with what I felt was the best dimensions. I wanted to make it a little bigger than the ones that I saw on the different YouTube videos. So I wanted to get as much airflow in it as absolutely possible. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't want to go too big because then you have to you know, buy longer wires and stuff along those lines. Um, so these crossbars, the width of it uh, is uh, 15 inches. That's 15. The height of it is 14 inches. And then the length of it is 23 inches. Okay. That is the longest. That's 23 inches. Okay. Correct. And the easiest uh, thing I did as far as the, the wood blocks, this part right here, um, I just had the uh, Home Depot guy cut these for me. I told him exactly how long I needed them. Um, it was a lot easier than me taking it home. They do it for free, it doesn't cost me anything. I just had to wait an extra 15 minutes for him to do it. Yeah. Uh, I tried to get him to cut the metal pieces. 
said no, so I had to cut that myself. Okay, that's really good to know too. Okay, so they'll cut the wood, but not the metal. Exactly, and um, you know, altogether, this is my first time doing it. I'd never built anything like this before. Um, once I got back from Home Depot, I had the whole thing built within about an hour, hour and a half. Um, There's a couple of mistakes I had to make, but overall, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, for the, I would say 30 to 40 bucks that it costs in supplies, it's well worth it for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half of your time yep. versus spending $150, $200 to actually, uh, build one. Plus you can customize it. Obviously, you know, if you have larger graphics cards, um, you know, you can, you can lower, you can raise it depending on, you know, the actual equipment that you have to be able to, to make it. Let me see what he's done. You can lower it and raise it here. Let me kind of let's go around here so you can see, see how the GPUs are sitting on it. We were talking about different ways to connect those risers there. See, And there's different options. We're going to, I'll probably come back and see how he ends up with it. You can have the riser sitting, but he brought up something interesting about doing a zip tie around it loosely, um, but that would keep those in and still hold your back. I think that's an interesting idea. Um, I have mine sitting because those risers are just so finicky. Now, Nate, can I ask, you said that you had made mistakes in... You know, we all do, I want to do this as learning for us. Isn't that a beautiful motherboard, by the way? But what mistake would you say, don't do this? Or what is the biggest learning lesson that you could pass on? Um, the biggest thing I would say is when you're actually kind of putting your frame together, um, put it together before you screw anything in because those holes are not forgiving at all. Okay. You know, with wood, you can kind of, you know, you can, you can manipulate it a little bit, but that, that metal doesn't want to bend. And if those holes are not lined up, um, I mean, I have wasted pieces of this metal. Thankfully, it's not that expensive, but I definitely have pieces of this that I had drilled holes into. Um, using the screws, I didn't, I didn't actually drill pre-drill anything, um, but they weren't lined up, so that, that kind of messed me up. So make sure you lay it out, you know, piece by piece. Lay the top part out first before you screw anything together. Make sure that this top piece right here fits the way you want it to. Um, if you notice, you know, this side right here comes over where on this one, this shorter piece and on this side the shorter piece is on top yep. that's one of those mistakes that i made where um you know I, I ideally would want that underneath but because i'd already drilled the holes i, I was sol i kind of had to just take it how it yep. was and just deal with it um and then the next piece i would i would start to do so you flip this over and then you would start to go ahead and put these pieces and attach this side so you have your legs coming down mm -hmm. um, and then i would attach my last two pieces of metal down here at the bottom and then I would go into attaching the uh, wood pieces that come across. And then the final thing I would do is insert these crossbars here. And then I would finish That's up our final piece. Yep. Finish up with this right here, which um, you know we may need to rework this depending on how those risers work. So we'll see when it's actually all done, um, how it actually ends up. Now I notice not all your wood. If y'all see, he's got six pieces of wood that are down that the motherboard is sitting on, but only one, two, and three screws. Why did you not use, screw all of the wood in? So I wanted to wait before I actually screw, and you'll notice the graphics cards, the GPUs aren't uh, screwed in either. Yep. Um, I wanted to wait before I actually made those. Um, it is a little messy when you start drilling through this. Um, there's a lot of um, like small little metal flakes that get created. Um, that can damage your motherboard. Yeah. So I, before I actually you know, screw and bolt everything down as a final product, I wanted to go ahead and kind of lay out how I want it. Mm -hmm. So um, the three main ones uh, are needed for structural reasons. So those I went ahead and just screwed down right away. Pure convenience and pure luck that that is the exact width of that. Yes. That I would love to say was intentional. Uh, it just happened that way. Um, and originally what I was gonna do is have two wood uh, sections here and two wood sections there. Mm -hmm. um, but that, if you notice on this, if I throw one there, it kind of, it doesn't let it sit securely on there. And if you notice how it kind of wobbles a little bit. Look at that, that's, yeah. So I removed the one, mm -hmm. slid this down, cause eventually, you know, these things can get bumped. Um, so what I'd like to do is put a couple of little brackets here, little L-shaped brackets here. So it's still easy to remove to take it off, but if it gets kind of bumped to the side or jostled around a little bit, um, it'll at least still stay in place. Um, and then the same thing on this side, if you notice, there's still two there. Um, I think I'm going to remove one of those and just have the one section there supporting the center of it. I think the two is a little uh, unnecessary. And obviously I can save these for the next frame that I build, so it's, it's not like it's going to be a waste of the wood. Um, but I would definitely recommend making sure that you know where everything's going to go before you screw it down. 
Uh, and then especially this part right here, because um, this is the part that, you know, if you if you put this in place and you screw this down prior to drilling these holes, you're going to run the risk of those metal flakes dripping into your uh, okay. motherboard. Now, you can always throw a towel over it, mm -mm. but I would rather just remove that from there so I know that it's out of harm's way, because um, they're not cheap, they're not inexpensive. Okay. Remove that out of harm's way, uh, drill your holes here, take the screws out, really clean it off. Uh, and make sure that you know you've gotten a good majority of that residue there, and then uh, you know screw them back on, and then you can finalize and screw this thing in. Um, but it, it was pretty simple. Uh, I know there was a couple of test runs, uh, you know, hooking it up. Uh, a couple of things that um, you'd brought to my attention um, that I'm sure you've already addressed in videos. Uh, the on switch I put in the wrong spot. Yep. Um, and this is y'all see again. There was the black tort on the outside. Three three pins over from your SATA here. That is so important if you don't have that. And this is actually a mistake that they have in the book. So that was one of the mistakes that I made in actually assembling it. And then the other thing I forgot to do was actually plug the power into the thing. So I was having trouble with the turning on. There's a power cable back here. Um, depending on your motherboard, obviously it could be in a different spot, but uh, mm -hmm. you can't forget to connect the power to the motherboard. That's your CPU, and then you have your ATIX CPU back here by your memory. So both have to be plugged in is what you're saying? Correct, I only had one of them plugged in. Yep. Um, you know, things that you, you, know, you learn, I've never built one of these before, it was my first time. Um, overall though, I will say uh, it, was, it was really easy, straightforward, following your videos made it really simple. Um, you know, I just, I had my phone sitting there as I was kind of constructing it, replaying the video, replaying the video a couple times, but, um, the frame itself, you know, maybe an hour and a half altogether. I think I can bust the next one out in an hour after having, knowing what I'm doing and then just taking the rest of this stuff up. I mean, it really took another, maybe half an hour to be able to do, mm -hmm. um, to where I could at least get it turning on. Obviously I still need to get the risers in here, hook up the rest of these, uh, GPUs. I got a couple more still that, um, are in boxes and, uh, you know, finishing it up. Well, it looks beautiful. I hope everybody enjoyed this. I know I did. Thank you very much for your time. Nate, if y'all are interested in some of his other information, we'll have links in the description specific to Nate and some of his, uh, his codes as well as his information. Thank you again, Nate. No worries. Anytime.